Ladies and gents, boys and girls from around the world, welcome back to 99 Pod. It's not 1999 anymore. And believe it's not, so won't y'all make yourself feel at home. Like and subscribe to the channel to get them notifications that we have coming your way because it's coming your way like an avalanche, okay? Because this is not our final last dance. We got a lot of dances here on this um show a lot of episodes coming up a lot of lives like this one right this is a live this is not the regular show not a regular format so once again you know like and subscribe make yourself feel at home and you know we're gonna get it in man we're gonna talk about boxing today obviously for those of y'all boxing fans you know exactly what we're gonna talk about if not then you're not a boxing fan okay we're gonna talk about tia Fima lopez and Josh Taylor that happened last night, okay? So, you know, I want people to start coming in as we proceed. You know, once again, like you subscribe to the channel. I don't know if I got to speak in Mandarin. Salute to all my Chinese friends out there, man. For real, for real. Salute to all my people around the world. Black, white, yellow, green, whoever you are. Come on, you know? We about to we about to make it happen right now. I'm going to pass over the mic to my co-host immediately who's on the mic with me. Zay, how you feeling? What's the vibes looking like? Oh, man, listen, it was a great weekend for boxing. Uh, we be seeing um, Teofimo Lopez, his confidence resurged, a resurged Teofimo in that ring, uh, some, something we haven't seen in quite some time, in a few years, actually, from Teofimo Lopez since that Lomachenko fight. So he's seen a uh, resurge, uh, just an energetic fighter, a guy who was confident from the first round all the way to the 12th. Um, he he um, had his way in the ring. He did whatever he wanted to do, and, and um, he, he just looked confident. Man, that man was just moving around the ring in such a pace. I was just like, I'm happy to watch this. You know, then it, it goes back to what we said a couple shows back, talking about our, my, our heart says Tio Fimo, but our minds were saying Josh Taylor. And I'm just glad that uh, we saw the heart of Tio Fimo Lopez, you know, and his infamous saying, do I still got it? That was that was a great moment in the ring for him. Glad to see the victory. I can't wait to touch it, talk about it more in depth in a few minutes. Yeah, and I guess you don't have to wait a few minutes. I guess we can just um ease our way into the flow of this show. As you see at the bottom of the screen, Diafima Lopez stuns Josh Taylor at MSG with a very huge upset. And I'm not upset at all. You know, sometimes I try not to follow my heart when I talk about sports. But, hey, in this scenario, following the heart was the best thing for me and ultimately the right answer. You know, Zay, I want to kick it off because when you talk about this fight, a lot was said about Teofimo's mental state, right? Where is he at mentally? Does he have the mental fortitude to um give Josh Taylor an attitude in a fighting manner, you know, in a fighting way, in a fighting spirit? Is that fighting spirit still there? Modelo, no pun intended, right? And, um, you know, I was saying to myself, he did what he was supposed to do. And the reason why we recording this show right now at you know, noon Eastern time on a Sunday instead of last night is I like to allow sometimes my thoughts to marinate, you know, sleep it, you know, sleep it through. And then a lot of thoughts kept flowing. And, you know, Tia Fima, I'm proud of him. He did what he was supposed to do, what any professional is supposed to do. Right. Trust me. We all humans have a lot of issues. Now, everybody's issues is different. Right. And clearly Tia Fima Lopez life, you know, family outside of boxing is spiraling out of control right but that's the modern guy that's like the regular human you know the average human we all have stuff right buster douglas when he upset the great mike tyson his mama died a week before the fight and guess what he still was mentally in check to pull off the greatest upset of all time right how many times we see fighters juggling court cases as soon as they win that fight they're going straight to jail behind bars right but they still do what they have to do it's it happens right Last year or the year before that, during the pandemic, I had a lot of family issues going on. But I came on this show, you would never know. I kept it professional. I did what I had to do for an hour and a half, and I went back to the crap, okay? And it is what it is. And Lopez did what he was supposed to do. He's a talented fighter. And I have one statement that I want to make as far as a, a quote. Hard work beats talent when talents fail to put in hard work. You know, if you're a talented individual, you can make it work if you have the, the hard work, right? If you put in the work. And clearly, Tiafima Lopez said that 
he didn't take spawn session seriously. Well, he didn't say that, but he said like, you know, two weeks of spawn before Sander Martin. I mean, clearly you're not taking it seriously. And that's why he, you know, you could say he lost the fight. He he won, he won the fight though. The judges looked out for him, right? Um, Cambosos, he was trying to knock him out round one. Did not take that fight seriously at all as well. And guess what? You know, we had people who are coming into the stream. I don't know if I send another another person a, a link. Okay, let me find out. We got Tiafimo Lopez in the back, <laughs> right? Okay, but anyway, bottom line is he didn't take the fight seriously prior to this one after Loma, and he took this one seriously. And like I said, talent beats hard work when talent you know, puts in the work and he did. He was throwing a uh how can I say he put on a master class, he showed his ring IQ, you know. Um, his athleticism, the hand speed difference was clear. I mean, you can see Josh Taylor punches coming from a mile away, like literally, you know, he was very slow, he was very indecisive with his thinking. And um, Lopez took advantage of that, hit him with some hard rights and practically ended his night, you know. And he threw a lot of different punches. Normally, we see Theofimo Lopez head hunting, trying to go for the money shot. Not in this fight. He threw a variety of punches, boxing, clinic, and all that, and defense. Everything was there, and that's why he's at the top of the mountain at 140. Congrats. Hey, man, listen. Uh, as I set my mic up, apologize for that. Um, that fight last night was something I was not expecting. Um, early on, we saw Taylor um, control the ring early. Um, I thought that was, that was going to be the making of the fight. You saw Taylor be aggressive. I personally, I had him winning the first three rounds, just premised off of what Taylor was able to do um, against Teofimo Lopez. I saw um, a timid fighter in Teofimo early on. He was throwing his jabs, but he wasn't really connecting the way he wanted to. Um, you saw him second guessing himself, and I guess in that fourth round he woke up. You know, and that's that's how I saw the fight. He just woke up, and after that, it was like towards the end of the third, and then the rest of the way was Teofimo. He just felt more confident in that ring. He saw that to um, Josh Taylor. Um, kind of wasn't was showing all he could do. Like he, he just showed us the, the jab. He showed us like he tries to go in um with the dirty tactics, you know, with the holds, holding his head down, um, hitting him when he was um kind of like slumped on the on the on the ropes and still hitting him, connecting, you know, uh trying to really put him out of there with the cheap hits. And I think that was something that Tiafimo was like upset about, but he expected nonetheless, and he was able to outbox him. He thought Josh Taylor the number one lightweight. And at 140, was super lightweight at 140, was this tactical fighter. And he's expecting more of a ta tactical fight, expecting more to come from Josh Taylor. But he saw that that's all he had was these dirty tricks, that jab, and um, just to keep leaning with the head. And Teofimo Lopez felt confident in his boxing skill and acumen to really take over. Like, his talent is uh, oh, so much better than Josh Taylor. I think it would, we have to acknowledge that Teofimo Lopez is one of the more gifted boxers in the ring it's just that his mind gets in the way of that things that are going on outside of the ring gets in the way of that you could see in his previous fights against cambosis and then uh i forgot the last guy he fought where it was a controversial victory it just was not the same guy the same talented fighter that we saw in the ring who knows he could beat anybody in the ring who knows he has a talent he puts in the work to really showcase that on, on the grandest stage of the mall rather than it's the mgm rather it's mass square garden so on and so forth this guy knows that he could beat anyone that's in front of him. I think that's something that we saw against Josh Taylor, man. This guy was landing that that little jump left hook. You know, he was doing jumping jabs. He was um dancing in the ring every time Josh. He Taylor was doing missed, jumping jabs and jumping jacks in the ring, literally, right? <laughs> literally, every time Josh Taylor or missed, he like looked behind him, like, oh, where's that? Like he just felt so much confidence in that ring, and that's something that I am glad. We had we saw, you know, I, I wanted to film Lopez and knock him out, but I think going 12 rounds, we got to see a full uh 12 rounds of Tio Fimo really showcasing his talent. I'm glad he didn't take rounds 11 and 12 off when it seemed like he had so many rounds won. You know, that, that, that was the Lomachenko, I mean, the Lomachenko issue. You know, you take rounds 11 and 12, oh, I did enough. No, his ring put it in his mind. Listen, you didn't do enough. Keep fighting as if you are down around. You need to keep going because the judges will take that win away from you. And that and was clearly something they I was tried. nervous about. 115, 113 was ridiculous. Two, that almost, I thought Josh Taylor won it when he said 115, 113. I was like, oh, no, here's the robbery. Here it goes. So I think that's something that I'm glad his ring, even despite sometimes he has some issues with his coaches, his pops, and whatever, I'm glad that he listened to him in that particular moment 
not to get too cocky, you still need to win this fight. The fight is not over until you A, knock him out, or the 12th round is over. So continue fighting. Salute to my guy, Kenny Smith. You know, one of my homeboys from the sandbox, all right? From the sandbox to, you know, I don't know what rhymes with sandbox. You know, I put myself in a little jam there. But salute <laughs> to my guy, Kenny Smith. Listen, man, I can't always think about the words that rhyme. You know, most of the time I do, but not all the times, man. I'm human, you know. But salute to my guy, Kenny Smith. You know, I'm, I know he was locked into the fight, as he always is. And, you know, I'll pick up, you know, where you left off. It was round four where I saw Diafimo Lopez make the necessary adjustments to take over this fight. And the rhythm gained the confidence, right? Like you said, the first couple rounds, he looked a little timid to me. But once he got in that rhythm, that's when the confidence came through. And um, his power traveled to 140. That was one of the things that, you know, a lot of people was asking, is that power? Because, we you know, he was knocking cats out. He was giving cats sieges at 136. Is that power going to move up and travel with him to 140? Clearly it did. Because Josh Taylor, as my guy said, the power made Josh Taylor think twice. And a lot of people is saying Josh Taylor didn't look the same. Um, Negro, hello. Okay, Lope, um, Loma didn't look the same when he fought um freaking um Tiafima Lopez because he respected that power. That's why he took rounds off. That's why he was timid, right? So it's not about oh these fighters are not looking the same. It's about the daggone power that they're feeling and they're scared that once they get touched they're gonna get flushed. Okay, and that's what it is. And Tiafima Lopez, that's a great sign because you have a lot of guys at one forty that can crack even more than Lopez, right? We just progress can crack. Right, um, who else is over there? Roly, say what you want about the fundamentals, okay? But uh, he can crack. Ramirez, right? I think he's the second, he's the second contender right now to land with uh, Ramirez, all them cats can crack. Mm -hmm. So the fact that his power traveled, if he can literally be that same fighter he was last night with all the boxing and, and everything, the movement and, and just all, the whole complete package, yo. It's funny you say that. It's funny you say that real quick. I want to jump in because Teofimo Lopez, the broadcast was saying that he was standing still a lot of the times in a fight. He wasn't really putting on a clinic because he wanted to load up his punches. But we saw the best of Teofimo. We saw when he dazed Josh Taylor when he's throwing his combinations, when he's throwing the, the rapid punches, the, the, jab, the multiple jabs to the hook, the multiple hooks to the jab, the body shots. We, we've seen the combinations that really dazed Josh Taylor. I really was putting him out. Like, I'm not a fan of loading up punches if you're not Deontay Wilder, because Deontay Wilder is really that guy. But outside of that, like, um, Teofimo Lopez is at his best when he's throwing a flurry of punches because the one that knocks guys out are the ones that they don't expect. The ones that's not loaded up. The one that's just like, oh, crap, he just caught me. And Teofimo Lopez is a guy who is so rapid in his punching ability. It's so He's so quick to think off his feet to, oh, I'm going to do this to him. Boom, boom, boom. He had so many punches last night. My dad, like, he's beating this guy up. The only thing I didn't like from Teofimo Lopez last night was the uppercuts. Like, stop throwing them. He landed, I think, one out of nine. One out of ten. And I just I just feel like they're way too predictable. You see, they, people see it coming. Even Josh Taylor, who was getting his butt with most of the night. It was a Teofimo masterclass last night. But that uppercut, not really as potent as he thinks it is. I think he needs to put that away, keep it, throw it out, do something else, because everything else was working. The jabs, the hooks, the body shots, that's his bread and butter. The uppercut is like, it's cool, it looks flashy, but you're not Javante Davis. That's the only kid I really see right now who has one of the most devastating uppercuts in the damn boxing uh, world right now. But I think right now, he's talking about Teofimo Lopez. Everything else, he AJ showed got out a his little, case. AJ got a little uppercut, you know, oh, AJ, yeah, 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 AJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, AJ, you saw he did the Klitschko, man. Yeah, he had that dude looking like Wheezy from Dragon Tales. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think when you talk about Teofimo Lopez, when he throws a jab behind that power shot, he's hard to beat. You know, when he's headhunting, going for that money shot, nah, set up the jab behind it. You know what I'm saying? Or jab and set up the power behind it. I think for me, right, I do want to put my mask on right now because we're going to be talking about the judges, and they toxic. I want to talk about the scorecards right now, right? As you see, I got on my mask right now because anytime I'm talking about anything toxic, I got to wear a mask, okay? When you talk about the judges, right, the three scorecards, I want to take a look at that. One judge, and I, I wish I wrote down the names, right, because I love to call out names. But um, actually, do I have the names? No, I don't, right? But I do have the cards. One judge gave it 117-111 for Teofimo. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Right, I, I could live with that. I could co sign that 115 to 113. Are you kidding me? Two judges, and that's the point that you made 
earlier, Zay, that I would love to just take and expand. When you talk about Diofimo Lopez and his championship mentality in the championship rounds, that's mm -hmm. why he won the fights he won. Against Loma, that round 12, I don't care what nobody say. I've been watching boxing for a long time, okay? That was the best round that I ever seen, okay, in the modern times from a, from a boxer. All right, hot takey, takey, wakey, wakey. Yes, hot take, I get it. He threw the most punches, right, Um, against Loma that Loma has ever, you know, got caught with in that round 12. He took that fight. When Loma started putting the pressure on him and he won five straight rounds, he took that 12th round, right? That's why he won that fight. When you talk about this fight, you would think that, okay, it's a wide margin. I only gave Josh Taylor two rounds, rounds one and three. I gave him three because I was having a good day. So I said, you know what? Because I'm having a good day and it's close, I'm going to give Josh Taylor round three, right? That's the most that I gave him. And the fact of the matter is you would think you're up. So most fighters, like Loma against Haney, right? You heard Haney in the 11th round. You think that you won the fight. And so you go on a vacation in round 12 and then only to realize that you are getting robbed. Mm -hmm. If Lopez did not win that 12th round and take that fight away, the judges would have took that fight away from him. I repeat, if Lopez didn't take that round, that fight away in round 12, the judges, okay, would have took that fight from him. If he didn't win that round 12, it was a draw. Absolutely. Are oh, you kidding point. me? That's why I got on the mask right now. For those of y'all wondering, why is this cat in the mask? Because we're talking about the toxic judges right now that need to go away from the daggone spot. I'm sick of this garbage, okay? Why do I got to come on the show, okay, and take away from the credit that I'm supposed to be giving to Lopez to talk about y'all clowns, y'all dinosaurs, y'all blind bats. Listen, I got to find out. <laughs> if Stevie Wonder really did judges, show them on camera, okay? And you know what? I know Martin Luther King. I'm going to take off my mask because I can't breathe, okay? I know Martin Luther King would not appreciate me saying this in any, you know, regular, how can I say it, um, conservative, you know, um, person would not want me to say this. But salute to my guy, Kenny, because Kenny, you know, off air, I'm not trying to get Kenny in trouble. But, you know, <laughs> I said his name, right? <laughs> Kenny, we're going to go down together, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said, you know what? They need to beat these judges' ass. These fans out here, show them, show them the camera. They need to beat these judges' ass. Anytime that these cats out here robbing folks, beat they ass. Please, okay? Give them an ass whooping for the lifetime, okay? Because they think they can just rob somebody and beat traffic after that. Oh, I'm out of here. Nah. Look at that referee, man. I know I'm going on a, on a tangent here. I'm going away. I'm going to come back. Look at that um referee. um What's that referee um from Brooklyn? That um ref the Oh, oh. Damn it. Uh, um, he ref the role in. Um, about, it's not Wolves. It's just someone else. I forgot his name. Oh, shoot. Um, I know what you're talking about, but he, he, had, he had that, that, uh, that controversial statement when he said about. He had that controversial statement, right? I, I want to listen. I want to expose these clowns. I want to get their name out here, but I can't remember names right now. I don't even remember my name. But anyway, that, that referee was ridiculous. He literally came out and said that um, Barbosa was. um. Or Bar I did, it's Barbosa, right? Barrios, he came Bar out the, the Romero and Barrios, the ruling Barrios. Yeah, fight. Barrios, right? He came out and said that yo, you know, he was older, and um, that's why he had like a little how can I say it? Anytime he saw him hurt, he was gonna stop it because he's 40 something and you going up against a younger fighter. He literally stopped the fight based off anticipation, okay, mm -hmm. and what he thought, not what was landing. Mm -hmm. Literally, oh, he's older, so I'm just stop it, not what, what was landing in that exchange. Yo, we got to do better. But anyway, I'm not going to take away any more from um, the Afimo spotlight. But Zay, I'll let you respond to that before we proceed. You know, uh, even a referee last night, you know, he, he let Josh Taylor get away with a lot. Yes, We're talking about a lot. A lot of I mean, warnings, no penalties. He warned uh, him like every round. Every round was a warning. How, how many more warnings you got? He's only three. Last time I said, it's three strikes you out. Not 87 strikes. He had um, the holding. He had the um, the headbutts. He had hitting him on the ropes when it, it just it kept going on and on and on and it just never stopped. It didn't make any sense. You know, most of the cuts that was on TFM and Lopez was because of the headbutts. Because of the, the the it was like a lot of different fight, lots of different stuff. You know, it doesn't make any sense how the referee just kept on allowing it to go. Like when where was it gonna stop? Like I just don't understand it, you know. But uh besides all that, uh TFM and Lopez showcased something last night that I didn't think could he could possibly do. He took out another number one in a different division. 
you know, another another underdog victory. And, you know, people could say, oh, well, both fighters had layoffs. Both fighters are coming back from injury. We're not trying to hear none of that. This is a guy who just came back from two underdog fights in two different divisions. These are two division champ currently. Oh, uh, not currently. Right now, two division champ. And you got to give him praise. You have to show that. You have to show him showcase. That's the comeback victory you want to see Danny Garcia have. That's the comeback victory you want to see Keith Thurman get. Teofimo Lopez got that. At 25 years old, too, his belt just goes down the line. And, you know, it's unfortunate that we may not see him box again because it, the, the report said, first, from his words, he's mulling retirement. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. I don't want to cut you off. We're we about to get there because I want to talk about that further. But All I right, do want to. Before, before that, before that, before that, before that, talk about it real quick. He showcased a lot of grit, a lot of grind against another number one in a, in a division where he could have got put out in a division where he could have been fearful of the power. He didn't know what to anticipate against a number one in that in that fight. He was a ninth, I believe, ninth ranked fighter at 140, uh, according to I think uh, a website I was looking at um, early this morning. He was a ninth ranked fighter in that division and he beat the number one. That is kudos to him. Grit, grind, hard work, and everything you put into this game of boxing showed in the ring he's talking about he, he wasn't um he was prepared to die no he was prepared to give an ass whooping and that's exactly what he gave to josh taylor yeah and i think when you have all those things going on in your personal life that sometimes it can make you superhuman mm -hmm. because it's like i have a i'm losing a lot and we're going to talk about that further after we talk about the retirement because that's going to coincide with what i got to say about that you know my wife already took half of my money half of my earnings, half of my assets. So if I die today, that's what that's how I took it. A lot of people say, a lot of people, you know, they was losing their mind because, you know, he was like, oh, you know, I, I want to die in the ring. Like, he didn't mean it like that. He's like, listen, if I die in the ring, I'm going to throw it all out there. If I die, I die. I already got a lot of stuff going on. So it kind of make you invincible to a certain extent because it's like, it doesn't get worse than what I'm going through personally. So all I have to do is leave it all out there, and that's it. That's literally how, you know, in some ways I attack life, right? There's a lot of things going on. Life is not perfect. I don't got a lot to lose, so I'm going to go all in. I do have a lot to lose, and I'm going to go all in, but I don't have a lot to lose, so I'm going to go all in, right? So I think that's why he performed his best along with taking Josh Taylor seriously. You know, I think Theofimo Lopez will be that type of guy in the big fights. He'll show up. He'll look the best in those type of fights, those high-profile fights, but – in those lower profile fights, I don't, I'm not sure if he's interested in fighting those anymore because I don't think he will look the same in those, right? And I think that was evident from what we saw against Loma, what we didn't see against Cambosos, what we didn't see against um Sander Martin, and what we did see against um Josh Taylor. But I do want to move on to the retirement, you know, portion here because you know Teofimo Lopez did say he was um retiring. He posted on Instagram this morning. So are we buying that Diafima Lopez is officially retired, Zay? Um, I told the money, you know, it's always about the money at the end of the day. So if something pops up where it's a it's a, it's a money that you can't uh uh, uh what do they call it, Scarface? Not Scarface, excuse me. Um Godfather, a deal you can't refuse. The deal like that, offer that's you a, can't refuse. A offer you can't refuse. I kept saying deal. But the offer you can't refuse, that's when you're gonna see until Fimo comes back. Um it's gonna be guys going up there asking to fight him. You talking about Garcia's, we're talking about possibly Haney's. We're talking about uh, progress to, to get the belt. We're talking about Ramirez, possibly. Um, he didn't put in the paperwork yet to come, to officially announce his retirement. He didn't give up the belt just yet because he wouldn't be in a, in a, in a position to say, where's my belt at the end of the fight if he was playing retirement all, the whole time. So he's not he, – he's probably just saying it right now, like, let me take a few months off and then get my head right and then get back into it because he is having a lot of, like I said, I don't know the – about ring issues so he probably wants to get that right first but once everything's all set in, set in stone ready to go 25 years old the man is just his career just started you know like, you could really make that argument the career just started even after all the accolades and accomplishments he has he still has a, a, a lifelong career in boxing if he chooses to stay in, in the ring you know this man is so young and still can accomplish so much more so i think he still has the opportunity to come back it's just i think right now so there's so much going on all he's thinking about is the family stuff and not what's that way he could possibly have a future in, in the ring. Now, before I get to my take on the retirement portion, I did have some ideas that I left on the table, right? I don't want to leave any meat on the bone today. 
So um, when you talk about resumes and boxing, right? And I know this might be a hot takey, takey, wakey, wakey, shaky, shaky, makey, makey, right? Teofimo Lopez might have the second, you can make the argument, best resume in boxing right now. Literally. I mean, you talk about the age of 25. He won the fight against Loma. I want people to realize and go back in time because sometimes we forget. We see Loma look on you know how can i say we he looked more human now over mm -hmm. the last couple of years but let's go back to when lopez fought loma loma looked like he was invincible to most people all right and lopez won that fight at the age of 23 years old okay at the age of 23 years old won the belts he was at the top of the food chain then a couple years later age 25 last night to be exact he beats the guy at 140, Josh Taylor, to win the junior welterweight title. Okay? The only resume right now, you could talk about the strength of resume, but when you combine the names and the hardware, the belts and the accomplishments from, like, a bigger scale and the worth of it, he's right up there. The only person that I would say that has a better resume, right? I know I'm going to get a lot of flack. I do not care. Please, I do not care. The only guy that I would say has the better resume in boxing is Alexander Usyk, okay? Um, literally, he was the unified at Cruiserweight, right? Won all the belts over there and literally doing the same thing at heavyweight. Have three of the belts at heavyweight, okay? Literally fought two to three heavyweight fights before he did that. And he has like 300 plus amateur fights, right? Alexander Usyk and Teofimo Lopez have the best resumes in boxing right now, okay? And... I'm going to respond to the retirement. And Zay, feel free to respond to that take right there. As far as the retirement, I'm not buying that, you know. I think for me, we have to realize that, um, you know, he's in court trying to gain custody over his son. He said that his wife was taking 50% of what he earned. I think um, a lot of it may have to do with the, you know, with that type of situation, right? Because if you're not making any income, then you can't continue to take right think about that like from that perspective shoot i'll retire too if that was the case like zay i'm not trying to go off the deep end here but i don't understand why men continue to make the same mistakes that other men make i, I just don't understand it i'm not trying to i'm not dr phil i'm dr Lil though and i keep it reals though okay so like i don't understand why these fellas continue to make the same mistake i mean it goes on and on and on Dr. Dre, I mean, the list goes on. The regular average Joe up the street, right? Mm -hmm. And Sugar Shane, if you want to keep it close to boxing. Remember what happened to Sugar Shane Mosley? Oh, Lord. Y'all, do y'all remember what happened to Sugar Shane Mosley? His wife took everything he earned, even his daggone belt. How the hell you never fought in boxing? You got the WBO belt. Literally. Okay? Took everything he earned. And, um, you know, men, man, we got to do better than that, B. You know, um, yeah, I don't know why men continue to make the same mistake. I think a lot of it has to do with that, the personal issues and the legal battles. Maybe he, you know, want to get that figured out. There's a lot of pressure on his plate right now. He's in another battle right now currently that's not boxing. And I think once that get figured out and the money come calling, then uh, we'll see him back in the ring pretty soon. Yeah, man, I mean, listen. His resume is definitely up there. Uh, like I'll have to really examine it uh, thoroughly so I can really see who he who he's fought. But he's done a lot. He's accomplished a lot, you know, early on uh, in his career. 25 years old, already two division ten. You know, we only seen a handful of fighters do that. You know, and then, you know, Brawners and Mayweather's, uh, Garcia's. I believe is a two time. No, I don't think is, is Garcia a two division champ. No, right? I don't believe so. Who? Which Garcia? Dan. Not, I'm not talking. About, I'm not talking about Danny. But I think Mikey was the two division, right? Yeah, and I Danny believe so. I believe Mikey. so. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's only a handful of guys that, that has accomplished this feat, uh, you know, and it's, you can count on your hand. So uh, there's something that you really have to um, admire in, in, in regards to his resume and his, his talent, his skill. He has the skills to pay the bills, literally. So it's about – it's really it, – that's the thing about Teofimo Lopez. It's always mental. Cause that, when people talk about Teofimo Lopez versus anybody, it's all about mental. Is he mentally there? Because the skills are there. No, no one can doubt his talent as a boxer. No one ever. So very similar to Danny Garcia, right? Danny Garcia has all the talent to win any fight in the ring. The issue is mentally, when it's time to fight, 
he cites himself out sometimes. Sometimes he feels like he gives his opponent way too much respect, and then it takes him out the fight entirely. There's no reason why Danny Garcia has fought in so many different guys. We're talking about Thurman's, Porter's, um, Spence. That's one guy. You're right. Danny Garcia is right up there. You're right. Lucas Matisse. Um, who else he fought? Um, he Zab fought so Judah. He fought so many guys. I'm talking about like the losses yeah. he had was all because it's up top. It, that's really all it was. It was never because, oh, this guy's way more talented than him. He's way more strong. No, Garcia has the power and the talent to beat anybody in that ring. But he gives his opponents way too much respect, and he psychs himself out the ring. His dad tells him all the time, yo, listen, go at him. Go at him. Let him hands fly. Let your hands fly. You are better than this kid. But he doesn't think that because when he's a, um, across the ring with a champion, his mind is like, don't lose the fight. It's going to go out there and win it. And that's something that we saw Tia Fimo was um, going, leaning towards when he fought Ken Bosas, when he fought um the uh somebody else. I forgot the guy before. I keep forgetting the guy before he fought. That was oh, a Martin? I think so. The controversial one. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Sandra so Martin. He didn't, look, he didn't look like the confident fighter. But this fight, he saw... Food and from that third round, from that fourth round on, he was like, "I'm taking this fight. I'm going for the win. I'm not here for nothing. I'm putting it all on the line, and it paid dividends. The risky play paid dividends. So that's something that we hope to see moving forward if he continues his career. Because, like I said, I think right now the retirement's only due to everything that's going on outside of the ring. But moving, I think he's gonna go back in that ring. Hopefully by next year, if not by the end of the year, to fight another guy. That's a very good point, though. You know, comparing Danny Garcia to Teofimo Lopez because Teofimo Lopez, he goes for the risky plays, right? He he goes and he wins the fights in the 12th rounds, in the championship rounds. Like, he's willing to take risks. You know, he was the first guy to fight, you know, first marquee guy to fight Loma and beat him. He was the first guy to beat Josh Taylor, even though respect to Jack Catterwall. And I'm going to talk about that, you know, um, right about now. You know, he probably beat him, but... You know, that's a good point because Danny Garcia, he probably should have. Listen, Spence, after that accident, you get Spence at that time, 70% Spence. You got to make him feel that punches, man. Make mm -hmm. him feel that power. Go after him. If Sean Porter would have fought Spence after that car accident, Sean Porter would have won. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Especially when you talk about that, bro. So I don't want to, you know, get too sidetracked there. I do want to talk about that, though, about the, you know, the rematch that um Josh Taylor was asking for. Right, you know, he go to the, you know, after the fight, I want the rematch, and you know, he goes to the locker room post fight, get on his knees and begs for the rematch. Um, God don't like ugly, you know. That's why I'm still alive, okay? Because God don't like ugly, you know. And um, yeah, you know what you should have done, right? You should have gave Jack Catterwall his rematch, and you tried to, you know, maneuver and slip your way out of that to get this fight. And guess what? You got what you asked for. I bet you a hundred beans. Diofimo Lopez is not giving you no daggone rematch. If he didn't give Loma no rematch and that fight was close, okay, he's definitely not giving you no rematch here, okay? And you don't deserve no rematch. You need to clean up your mess and fight Jack Catterall again because he beat you, and you know he beat you. He didn't win no fight, okay? You didn't win no fight. What the hell are you celebrating last night for after the bell rung? You know damn well you ain't did nothing from round three on. And you out here, yeah, yeah, your coach is lifting you up like you the daggone Simba. Stop it. We ain't win Jack, okay? It was nasty. You need to fight Jack, literally. You ain't win Jack. You need to fight Jack Catterwall, okay, to be exact. But anyway, Zay, I got one more question here. Real quick, real quick. I just want to comment on that. Um, that was nasty when the coach held the lineal belt, and Tio Finn was like, yo, I need that belt. Like, I won that. And then Red Jack was just like, no. The coach was like, no. And then it was like, yo, you messing up 100 years of lit. You messing up the 100-year belt. You messing up boxing right now with that crap. And uh, that, that was like, damn, like, you know, so losers is never, that's not, that's not prosperous at all. But you kind of see how he became champion and what kind of champion he was. Yeah. And before we move on to the little subtopic that we have here, I do want to end off by saying that I forgot what I want to say. <laughs> you know, um, we always have those moments where we forget. Oh, bingo. I'm on fire today, y'all. All right. So buying that this, you know, retirement mm -hmm. It's not real because especially in boxing, you can never take those seriously. Mm -hmm. It's one thing in the NBA and the NFL boxing retirement almost means like I got 10 more years left. OK, that's what it means mm -hmm. in boxing. Right. We see it so many times. Tyson Ferry, retire, unretire, retire, unretire. So barring that he isn't retired. What's next for Lopez? What fight do you want to see next? Oh, man. I think, you know, for me. From a fan perspective, 
you want to see him go against the people he was feuding with before. Garcia, Haney, potentially Tank if he wants to move up. The guys he was calling out. As a boxer, as a, as a person who's like in the boxing world and watching the community, you're going to want to see progress. Him versus progress next. That's the next big fight you want to see Lopez fight at 140 because that will mean he's starting to dismantle that division one by one by one. So you want to see him take over that division going against the guys who've been in that division, the guys who could really hit, the guys that people say that Lopez can't fight with. Um, and those are the guys you want to try to go after one by one. Um, people saying that Haney should be the next one. Haney should move up and go after Lopez right away. I'm like, whoa, not too, not too fast because – if you're saying Haney drops all the belts and moves up to 140, his next fight would be Brian Garcia. It's not going to be Tiafimo Lopez right away. He shouldn't just go straight to the belt because he's he has belts at 135. I think he's going to go after Garcia first because Garcia went up to 140 to chase the belts. So you can't just jump 140. Everyone just jumping into 140 thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going straight after Tiafimo now. That's not the case. You're going to have to wait your turn and wait a little while after that because I think Haney, even before he even sees Tio, he might have to see progress first. And then that's just a whole nother can of worms that I don't want to open right now, but Lopez has a lot of options right now. He could really take any fight he wants. Like um, Josh Taylor said last night, you have the belts, you have the cards, you're the, you're the, you have everything. You you said it last night. You have the aces. You 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 pick who you want to fight. Now you 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 have all the belts. You who do you want to see next? So I think that's gonna be very interesting. You know, Bronner makes some you know wise crack about wanting to see the winner of Josh Taylor versus. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez, you know, you know, in there, any anywhere near that that fight or any fight in that matter, you're gonna have to work your way up in 140. I'm sorry, like your name no longer holds weight in the in the sport of boxing. You have to, you have to build your name back up. You have to show us who Asian Burner is again, because right now I forgot, I forgot everything we did. So it's like you need to show us who you are. But Lopez has a bright future at 140. But I'm excited that he won because now we could possibly see all the rivalries. At 135, at the at the um weight at 140, at the weight where uh Haney said possibly that he was he was going too much he was losing too much weight he wants to walk around his natural weight fine go to 140. Ryan Garcia yeah I was losing too much weight at 135 I want to fight my natural weight all right cool go to 140. Tiafimo Lopez fighting at 140. I'm glad all these guys are now at 140 so they can fight at their full power that they say that they could do. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. But Lopez is a bright future at 140. We said it a couple shows before. I hope we play that clip black, uh, get that clip back in a, oh, in a few days so we can really talk about it again. But it was exciting to see him win, and I'm excited for his future. Definitely. You know, I think for me, if I had to say what's next for him, barring that he doesn't retire, I would like to see him rewrite his wrong and defeat Ken Bosos. You know, his one um, L on his resume. You know, if I was a fighter, and I'm not, but if I was, you know, if I was a boxer, that would be my, you know, MO to rewrite my wrongs. Any any stone left unturned, I will try to go turn it back. And I think to me, I will prefer that because, you know, Cam Bosis is still, you know, a, a decent fighter, even though he got out of school by Devin Haney. You know, I, I think he should go and rewrite that and, um, you know, move on from there. I would like to see a tank fight in the future. Who knows um, if Tank is moving up anytime soon. I think eventually Tank will move up because 140 is where the fighters are going to be at. The money is going to be at in the future very, very soon. So I would like to see that. I think they both are similar in the fact that they got power. Um, They got underrated ring IQ that we saw last night from Lopez in particular that we see a lot more than what people give Tank credit for. I would like to see that. Haney, fine. I'll take that because of the dispute. That these guys have the rivalry that they have behind the keyboard. So I would like to see that translated in the ring. So I'm I'm good with that. Like you said, he has the ace card. He has a lot of options. So he can call the shots if he wants. And the fight should be there for him. So that's my thoughts on that. But um, I do want to move on to the last, you know, thing that we have here. Talking about the state of 140. Right? Obviously, Adrian Broner fought on Friday. Mm -hmm. In case y'all don't know. Because I totally forgot. I mean, Zay, I got to be real with you, man, as I take a sip of this water, man. Because, um, <laughs> woo. <laughs> I got to be real with you, man. I remember a couple months ago when Adrian Broner linked up with Don King. Oh, wow. That was one of the more disappointing, depressing things I've ever seen in boxing history. 
a guy like AB, you know, when I was in high school, he had the boxing universe lit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember when I was in high school, AB was the guy. Like, everybody talked about AB. You know, um, his boxing, you know, was there. He was supposed to be the next Floyd Money Mayweather. The trash talking was there. Mm-hmm. The theatrics when it was there. He had the boxing universe lit. Okay. And to see him sitting next to Don King, man. Listen, my dad know who's Don King. Okay. Mm-hmm. My grandfather, okay, know who Don King is. Okay. To see him linking up with that guy. I thought, I, listen, I forgot the guy was still alive, to be honest with you. I mean, to link up <laughs> with Don King, that was one of the more depressing things I've ever seen in my life. You talk about a fall from grace. You're fighting on a Friday, bro. Who fights on a Friday? Okay. If you fight on a Friday, yeah, you fell. You fell from grace. And, you know, mm-hmm. he beat a lawyer in Aiden Hutchison, a lawyer. Okay. Um, it was very depressing. He won the fight, though. I mean, imagine if he lost that fight. I mean, that would be that would be um career KO right there. But he beat Aiden Hutchison. You know, he still got the trash talk, it's still there, right? He's still funny. But does he have the skills to make waves at one point to make the comeback? Zay, talk to me. That's the issue. I don't know. After seeing that, after seeing that fight, I do not know. He didn't put the lawyer away. He didn't, he didn't knock him out. He didn't put him away. I can't. I can definitely say, yeah, he's back. Agent Broner is back in. Like I do not know because the last couple times we've seen this man fight, the bigger name fighters, he couldn't go. He couldn't compete with them. He gets um, beat up essentially. He gets punches thrown at him the whole damn fight and think he's winning. Like I don't understand. He thinks, oh, well, I landed three punches in this round. I only threw five. And I should have won. Like, that don't make no damn sense. You barely throw punches against the bigger name fighters and more skillful fighters. And it doesn't make any sense that he thinks he deserves a title shot or even a contendership shot. You need to build your name back up. I have to wait to see who this Adrian Bronner is. Because I do not know. He's getting hit a lot against the lawyer. Everyone keeps saying, oh, he's, just, he's a lawyer, X, Y, Z. He's getting hit a lot. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, he definitely beat this guy. Like, he beat this guy bad. It was a close fight. I'm like, Adrian Brunner not back. I don't even know if he, he, he believes he's back. So I think right now, in the state of, at the state of 140, he's at the bottom, bottom of the total pole. I don't even think he's even in the top 20 conversation at 140. So I think that's when he needs to just relax. But I want to say this. The 135 fighters, I'm talking about the Garcias, the Haney's, uh, possibly Tanks, possibly Shakur Stevenson's, all moving up to take over 140. This this is crazy. This is one of the more talented group of fighters we've seen in quite some time. These guys are dismantling divisions one by one by one. Like once this 135 division is done, everybody's planning to move up. You can see Shakur moving up. You can see Tank moving up. Um, Haney, um, and when he makes that final decision to move up, everybody's gonna move into that 140 decision. And, I mean, um, division, and then it's gonna go to 145. And then it's gonna go to 150. They they're taking over boxing. Little by little, and I love to see it. This state of 140 is unpeck- impe- impeccable right now because there's already talent at 140, and now you're bringing in more talent. You know, you're bringing in tacticians with power at 140. It's going to be a beautiful sight when I see Ryan Garcia versus Progress, or when I see Devin Haney versus Progress, or Shakur Stevenson versus anybody at 140 in general, Tia Fimo, anybody. I think it's going to be a fantastic showing for years to come. And boxing better not mess us up because you know, boxing loves to wait. For 30 years to show the best fights. And, and, and I hope they take advantage of everybody wanting to move up at 140 and put them against each other early. I want to see the uh, top contenders versus the best the best fighters at 135 coming up. So I think it's going to be a beautiful sight to see. The state of 140 is at an all-time high. This is as excited as I was talking about the 135 at one point. So this yep. is as, as excited as the time was when Garcia, Thurman, and Porter was all fighting against each other, all top contenders and title holders. So I think for me... I'm excited, as you can clearly hear. And, uh, man, I want your thoughts on what you believe the state of 140 is. Yeah, I mean, before I even get there, I think Tank, he he should have been what Javante Davis is today. Mm. You know, that's where he should have been. Like, Javante mm. Davis is the current version of Mayweather. That should have been A.B. And, unfortunately, mm-hmm. I can't get over the fact that I'm seeing him with Don King right now. Like, I, I just can't get that out of my head. Like, mm-hmm. Don King could barely talk. I mean, my guy looked like ninety one years old. Ninety one. Yeah, he, he looked like Frederick Douglass, bro. I can't tell the difference. I'm like Frederick Douglass still alive? Okay, like oh man, like that. I I, I just can't get that image out of my head. But anyway, the state of 140. I think right now you can you could probably call 140 the division. Like if not today, tomorrow you can call it the the division, like of boxing. 
right? You want to have a lot of guys there. I understand Tank is still at 135, so, you know, obviously he has the belts. He has the box office attraction, right? You also got Shakur Stevenson over there. But Haney's moving up, you know. Um, Loma's still at 135, but um, Haney's moving up. Ryan Garcia is already over there. You know, he linked up with Derek James to, you know, open up his toolbox, especially from a defensive perspective. I, I love that hire because um, defensively, we know he needs a lot of work. We saw that in the tank fight. And that's why I'm not mad he lost that. Like, if you lose these big fights, you can learn a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, you can learn a lot. And, and it, it could be a learning lesson instead of, oh, your career is done. Like, nah, he has a long career in front of him. I'm talking about Ryan Garcia here, Rolly Romero. He's at 140. Say what you want about his fundamentals, but he can crack and he got personality, so he can sell a fight. Um, also, you have Diafima Lopez clearly at the top. Josh Taylor still, you know, reaches progress still. So 140 may be the best division in boxing right now. Honestly, like you, I can start calling it that. Like everybody's migrating over there. You mm-hmm. know, you talk about the great migration, you know, in, in history. That's 140 right now. It's the great migration of boxing right now. So, yeah, I think that's the state of 140. So, Zay, I'm going to pass the mic to you for one more final thoughts as we close here on the show. One more big takeaway that you want to leave the people with before we depart like the Red Sea. The mic is yours. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, hey, look, TFM Lopez, man, uh, this man showcased who he is, and I think he could possibly be, um, if he continues his career, um, the next Hall of Famer going in there, you know, I think in that that, that 140 uh, division, um, you know, this man is like is is lights out box office. You can't say he's not. You know, he beat Loma, he beat uh, Josh Taylor. Who else does he have to beat to get the recognition that he deserves as a boxer? You know, we all talk about outside the ring. We talk about his dad, and his controversial takes. We talk about everything about Teofimo Lopez except his um, ability to win big fights, and I think that's something that he needs to be recognized for. Something he's to be acknowledged for and to have the um, understanding that he is the next big thing in boxing. And I think that I'll leave it there. Yeah. I mean, look, man, every time Lopez opens his mouth, you know, you hope he don't step on a landmine because um, he's going to say something that's going to blow up a lot of air raves. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the killing, you know, the the black fighter comment, you know, you just hope you don't step on a landmine, right? But look, I'm proud of the dude. You know, he's from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. You know, I could relate. I'm very proud of him. He, you know, he won the Loma fight. You know, a lot of people counted him out. He asked himself, do he still got it? Clearly, he still got it. And he mm-hmm. got a whole lot of it. 25, still in his prime. And if I had to leave anybody with a big takeaway, I guess it would be learning from um, Lopez. Fellas, you know, y'all got to do better. Don't fall into that trap, man, where people can take half of your earnings. You work hard. Okay, listen, we, you know, everybody bring something to life. Men, women, we all bring something to the table. But man, like we, the infrastructure y'all see, we built that. We work Mm -hmm. hard. Okay, so don't let nobody take 50% of what you worked hard to get. Okay, Um, like in boxing, protect yourself at all times. Protect your finances at all times. I'm done. Good night. Peace out. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel to get the notifications of future content that we have coming your way. Zay, it's always a a good time getting on the show with you. Looking forward to the next one. Absolutely. Later, y'all. Peace out. Peace.